You are watching an Al Bear review. Cue the music. <laughs> What's going on guys? I'm back with another Haves and Have Not Review. Before we get into it, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, be sure to uh, comment, like, and share. Um, yeah, all of that good stuff. <laughs> um, last night episode, it was all right. It was decent. Wasn't too much going on in it. It was a, a filler, but it was decent. But anyway, I'm gonna jump into it because I got something to do after this. So the show kicks off. Uh, we're back in the hospital. Jeffrey and Justin and you know Jeffrey panicking about his dad. Justin was like he you know trying to console him and Jeffrey ain't trying to talk to um Justin, which I don't even know why Justin there. Like, um, we need to write him off. It's time for him to die. So uh Madison comes out the room, Jeffrey asking Madison what's going on. He kind of getting aggressive, you know, he wanted like I want to know what's going on with my dad, like what what is it? Well, you know, like he's He's really trying to see what's going on with his dad. So Madison tells him, you know, he had a cardiac, a cardiac arrest. And Madison was like, I shouldn't be telling you this. I should, you know, the doctor should. So Justin, big mouth, but why are you telling him this? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, why is this B-I-T-A telling you this if he's supposed to be telling the doctor? And I'm just like, dude, you say, you say you love Jeffrey or whatever, you got to play this situation differently. Like, I'm just not here, like, Tyler Perry puts way too much energy into this Jeffrey tri love triangle and I'm sick of it. So anyways, after Justin go off, talking about go off on Madison, like B, why you telling him you a little soft nerves, you ain't nobody, all that. The dude basically lets, uh, I mean, Madison lets Jeffrey know they're taking David to surgery, everything will be okay and you know, whatever. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I'm about tired of David being in the hospital. Like, can we just fast forward it? I mean, it's just a way of Tyler Perry letting himself off the hook with a, a storyline that don't even matter to us, at least not to me. So moving on, uh, we get a scene where the FBI goes to arrest um, the guy who put the bomb on Erica's car that was hired by, hired by Veronica. And I was surprised in this scene because it low-key looked like they took this scene from another episode and just inserted it there because A, it just looked so professional. Like, it didn't like a Tyler Perry production. I'm just sorry. And then it was a team of FBI guys. Y'all know Tyler Perry cheap. A team of FBI guys for Tyler Perry is about five or six, <laughs> you know? But anyway, they went to go arrest him. And then moving on from there, uh, we back at the hospital. Jeffrey is waiting on his dad to come out of surgery. Justin is trying to offer him um, something to drink. Jeffrey like, I don't want any coffee or whatever in there. He was like, it's not coffee. And I'm assuming it's some liquor. He basically like, Jeffrey drink this to help you calm down. At this point, I just want both of them to, to, to drink that poison that Romeo and Juliet drunk so they both can die. I'm sick of both of them. I'm just sick of the Jeffrey love story. I'm tired of it. So anyways, Jeffrey gets upset. He throws the cup and gives old Jeff uh, Justin a little push. And I'm just like, look at Jeffrey growing a set of some, you know, some some child balls, some boy balls. You know, he still ain't got no manly balls, but he growing some balls. So uh, he tells Justin, um, you know what I'm saying? I want you to leave. I'm tired of this, um, all of that. And so Justin was like, I ain't leaving. And so uh, Jeffrey was like, why you ain't leaving? It's, it's because you you, know, you only want to stay to spy on me, to watch me. And so I don't know what happened. He ended up saying leave again. This whole scene was just, and so this whole scene was just aggravating. I'm sorry. And so Jeffrey was like, leave. I'm tired of you. I don't want you here. I'm worried about my dad. I, can't, I ain't got time for your foolishness. And so Justin was like, oh, you want me to leave so you can be with that little, you know, B-I-T-C-H of a nurse. And so Jeffrey was like, I can't take it no more. I'm done. We done. Like this, this, whatever we doing is over with. And I just, I was just like, come on, Tyler. Let's just end it. You know what I'm saying? So Justin was like, no, this, this is not over. I sacrificed too much to be with you. So Jeffrey was like, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't my choice. You know, I mean, it wasn't my choice. And so, um, 
um, not Jeffrey, uh, the Justin was like, it wasn't my choice. You made me fall in love with you. All of that. Look, I ain't here for it. And Jeffrey was like, oh, so it was my choice when you pulled me over and, and basically raped me on the side of the road and made me do all of that nasty stuff. So basically, Jeffrey tells him to leave, and Justin was like, are you upset right now? I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna go back to our apartment and wait for you there. And um, just Jeffrey was just like, bro, I don't even know you, like this over and done with. And Justin was like, dog, if you knew me, you knew that whenever I'm away from you, I'm always thinking about you, I'm in love with you, I just wanna see you. And I'm just like, oh my God, like whatever. So then we get a scene where Candace is packing up her clothes. She get a knock on the door. It's Benny. He want he you know he coming to clear his head, and um, you know he tells her, you know what I'm saying, that um, you know he's upset at her and um, for the whole mama sending the thug. They were like, you know I'm upset with you, and she just told Benny, well have a seat in line because you're not the only one. And so he trying to figure out where she going. And basically she said, I don't know, but I got to get up out of here. And, um, you know, he want to come talk about the whole transfer money. And she tells him that she knows that he didn't sign the money. And, um, you know what I'm saying? He asked, how does she know? And she was like, somebody gave me a call. And he was like, who? And she was like, uh -uh, it ain't going down like this no more. I don't have to tell you who gave me a call. Like, that. I don't have to do that. So... He left it alone, and so they come up with a plan to get this money, all right? And so, um, cause we all know Hannah ain't gonna come around. So basically the plan is to go to the bank and apply a loan, uh, to get a loan and apply it against the, the money that's in the, the, the account. So um, basically that means the money will stay in the account as collateral unless they pay the loan back. And they ain't gonna pay the loan back, so they just gonna take the bank, just gonna take the money out of the account and be done with it. And so he was just like, I don't know, Candace, you know, the money kind of belongs to the criers. And so Candace was like, Oh, you talking about the crier son that ran you over, put you in the coma? This, see, this is the kind of stuff I need Hannah to be saying to Jeff, not Candace saying it to her brother. But, anyways, um, he was like, Okay, I get it. Then he, he like, Try to send a little threat with like candy. I'm telling you, if you send a, if you send us another man in mommy house, and she was like, you ain't gotta worry about that. I probably ain't gonna do it no more. Whatever. I don't put it past Candace, but I'm gonna agree with. It. I don't think she's gonna do it anymore, only because it didn't work, and she's not a fan of, of repeating the same actions and not getting the result that she wants. I'm just saying. So, and he th he still calling his mama mommy. So. Just, whatever. So anyway, then he leaves. Um, Landon comes in the room with a nice dress for Candace to put on to go to dinner with the future president elect. Um, and she packing. He asking where she going. And basically, he tells her that she ain't got no choice. She ain't going nowhere but the dinner with the president elect. And if she think otherwise, you know, something might happen to her. So. She goes on to say, bro, you ain't no gangster. You ain't no thug. I had a guy that made you piss in your pants. And he said, look here, dog. That was me on a local level with politics. This is me on a national level with politics. It's a whole different ball game. Then he tells, he was just like, you keep saying no, but ask me about the woman before you that was chosen and said no. So Candace asked me. She, and he was like, well, you see, I'm asking you now. So what that tell you? So that kind of shook, you know what I'm saying, Candace a little bit. And so it shook her enough to make her put the dress on and do whatever she had to do. Uh, I mean, go to dinner. So anyways, before we I get to the dinner scene with them, I'm gonna stay on track. So then we get a scene where the bomb, the bombsman who Veronica hired, he, you know, he was arrested earlier. So now he reaching out from jail to call Veronica and like basically let her know I've been busted. I need you to uh, represent me. And she just like, I can't do that. I, that. That won't be a possibility and she ends up hanging up. Now my thinking is, she planned this all along. Veronica, she's a helpful. That helpful is smart. She planned this all along to 
have him do this for her. Have him arrested and her hands free. Her hands free. Because after he hangs up the phone, he has a conversation with the FBI and basically lets the FBI know that she hasn't paid me, but she said she will. So now it's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? But the FBI owns her because both David and um, uh, Jeffrey told the FBI that they, that, that they believe it was her. So the FBI stepped out the room, the two agents, and they discussed, they were just like, they not buying his story. But then they were just like, let's go pick up Veronica on domestic terrorism charges. And the other, the one the FBI agent was like, bro, you sure? Like, she's a damn good attorney. I don't know if it's going to scare her or is it going to stick. So, but anyways, that's what they decided to do. And y'all know, like I know, it ain't going to happen with Veronica. She, she, she always a few steps ahead. It's just who she is. I'm sorry. So moving on. Hannah is packing up the apartment. She's packing up her clothes and, 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 and Derek is there and she's very uh, upset while she's packing out. Y'all know I don't care. So um he stops her. He was like, let me let me, you know, let me talk to you. And then you know, he just go on his romantic spiel. You've been through too much. You deserve to be happy. Blah 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 blah. I I you know I don't care about their love story. You know what I'm saying? But Cause she, you know, her getting some loving ain't gonna make me like, you know, she ain't gonna ease up on Candace or Benny or she ain't gonna ease up being a cryers know it all. So anyway, he was like, I got this two week all expense paid trip to the Bahamas, just you, me. So she's looking at it, you know, she like, um, no, I can't let you do it. This ain't gonna work. I ain't got no money to go. He like, I told you woman, I got the money. Just let me treat you right. She ain't trying to hear that. Then she keeps reading. She was like, oh, we can't do this for another reason. It's only one room, one king side bed. And look, man, maybe he just need to go ahead and just get on one and, and propose to her. I mean, cause you know, he was just like, um, he said, I know you know you I know you want to wait until marriage and you are in control of that. Um, so are you saying that you can't sleep in the bed next to me and not want to do sexual things? And so she kind of hit him, do you think you can sleep in the bed next to me and not do sexual things? And he said, nah, I can't, I ain't gonna even play myself. I can't. So then they start kissing, they fall on the sofa kissing. And um, at this point, I don't really care what happens, but if, if it happens, Hannah, good for you. Maybe you'll keep the eight mil and go in and live your best, best life. So back at the hospital, the doctor comes out and let Jeffrey know that the surgery went well. Basically, David had an, effect, an infection in his body that was caused from the fire because those type of burns lead to infections and they affect the heart and all of that good stuff. And, um, and Madison is there. He asks Jeffrey, he tells Jeffrey that he's worried about him and um, Justin. And, you know, he tells Jeffrey that, um, you know, if he don't do something about it, that it can just go even further. It, it, it just got control. It's already out of control. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this dude is crazy. So anyways, moving on, we get a scene at the Cryer house. The Catherine Boy toy. He calls her. Jim goes and look it looks at the phone see it's the hotel he was like Catherine you know why the hotel calling you and I'm like she's a partner like they can call whenever they want to so long story short she picks up the phone she talking cold with the guy that little boy to on the other end about the next time they can hook up and all that kind of stuff she talking cold in front of Jim and once she hangs up the phone, she lets Jim know, don't you ever look at my phone. Don't you even think about answering my phone. He was like, I'm not, because don't nobody ever call you. Uh, well, that's what he said before she answered. Like, don't know, nobody ever calls you. Like, why your phone ringing? And then afterwards, he asked, like, who was that? And she was like, don't nobody ever call me. Don't worry about it. So then Wyatt come downstairs, was like, he's out. He about to go, he, he, he leaving. And Jim was like, you ain't going nowhere. I have a court order. You ain't going nowhere. So, um, Wyatt picks up the phone. He calls uh, DA District Attorney George. 
lets him know, like, look, my dad's keeping me here under court order. Um, I'm locked in my parent and I want to know if you can come you can do something to get me out. And so this return, like, bro, what you want me to do? Like, you know, and why? Like, I tell you what, come see me. I'm ready to make a statement. And he was like, we already have a statement. He was like, no, I got more information. Just come. I got more information to make an even more juicier statement. So, um, he was like, the DA was like, okay, I'm gonna look into the court order, boom, boom. Hangs up the phone, why you say, now you keep me here if you want to. And watch what I do. Now, Jim, Jim, the boy crackhead, the boy cokehead, the boy hearing head, whatever. Let him go, let him go kill himself. Cause once he kill himself, he dead, he can't testify against you and the case kind of goes away. You know what I'm saying? Sacrifice the son. I'm, I'm just saying, sacrifice your son for your freedom, especially one that like to do drugs. Like them heavy drugs, not weed. You know, everybody smoking the weed. Well, not everybody, but I'm just saying, you know, he he do that stuff that you can just die from like right now. So anyways, um, Wyatt leaves, go back upstairs, and he threatened Jim and Catherine like, Jim? And he just like, I got this, Catherine, shut your mouth, stay in your place. I got this over here, and I'm just like, nah, bro. You just don't know what you got coming toward. That boy genuinely hates you, and he gonna make sure you feel his hate. So moving on, uh, Jeffrey is back at the hospital. Or when he not back, we back at the hospital. Jeffrey goes to visit David after surgery, and David is just like, boy, go home, find some something about Erica so you can call her people, boom, boom, boom. And so he was just like, Dad, I don't want to leave you here. You're going through, I'm around here with you. And I'm just like, boy, you ain't doing nothing but crying and having your little boyfriends argue over you. Go home and do what your dad asked you, right? So, yeah, he leaves. And um, as he's leaving, Madison is getting off work or whatever. So he asked Madison to go with him, right? And so um, Madison was like, you sure? I don't want Justin. And he was like, man, you, you, you good. You lift weights. You know, don't worry about Justin. I'm sure you can beat him up because I can't beat him up. So anyways, then we get a scene. The FBI that came to Veronica house and I was kind of expecting a little bit more from this scene. I was expecting her to be a little bit more snappier with them, but it wasn't bad. So they, you know, they, 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 they there and she asked how they got in. They said, you made, let us in. And um, they asked her to come down to the station and she was just like, she ain't going nowhere, it ain't going to happen. And so, um, you know, the FBI guys like, look, we're not asking. I mean, we're asking you. We, we, we're doing you a favor. So she was just like, the only way I'm going to the station if you got some charges. And if you ain't got no charges, the press pinned against me, I'm not going anywhere. So he was just like, the rules are different, especially when it deal with, uh, you know, terrorism charges. And, um... She was just like, look, if y'all ain't arresting me, get out. Like, I ain't got time to be playing cat and mouse with y'all. Get out. I ain't got time to be playing court, you know, Q&A with y'all. Just get out. So, they leave. And, it, it, and I, I just kind of expected more. You know, I kind of wanted Veronica to kind of, like, do something, like, manipulative or something like that. So, they leave. And Veronica went to go holler at her maid. Like, why did you left the damn FBI? In my house, like you know better than that. I mean, you only listen when the police come to somebody's black house, you don't let them in. You just don't. You tell them they ain't home and they'll be, you know, you don't let them in, man. And we talking about the FBI. So, anyways, um, moving on, it wasn't that good of an episode, so I'm just getting right through it, guys. Um, Candace arrives to the dinner with the future president. Uh, he compliments her on looking beautiful, and she was just like, Yeah, thanks. I was forced to be here. And so, um, you know, he was like, you're not forced to be anywhere. You had a choice. You made a choice, which she did. She could have stuck to her guns and not came. You know what I'm saying? So he, he kind of like, anyway, so then she asked, well, since I'm here, can I have a bottle of wine? And he lets her know, like, look, honey, we are being watched. And he was, she, she told him, she said, I don't care. This is who I am. And if you want me to be with you, I'm going to drink out of a bottle of wine. Like, Candy, that's not who you are. You are very upscale. You are, you know, you are upscale gangster. You, you, you like, you more upscale than the mob. So, like, cut it. So, um, long story short, um, she tells him that, um, you know, 
that she ain't feeling it or whatever. And so he was just like, maybe this was a bad idea. And, and I'm just like, so all it takes is a little public embarrassment to get you to realize that dealing with Candace is a bad idea. Okay, whatever. So he tells her that after dinner, you know what I'm saying, they can go their separate ways. And she was like, oh, so can I leave now? So he was like, sure, you can go whenever you want to. You know what I'm saying, you leave now, after, it don't matter. So she gets up and leaves. And as she's leaving, she thoughts, she thinks about something. She goes back to the to the table and asks him a question. What happened to the last girl that said no? And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. And so she would, she said, Landon told me about her, X, Y, X, Y, Z. And so he basically just said, look, if you're not afraid, just leave. Nobody, you know, if you ain't afraid, just leave. Nothing gonna happen to you. Just don't think about what Landon said. Just leave if you want to go. Like, don't make it harder than it got to be. So, Candy is kind of scared. Because she, she ain't dealing with, like, a low-level game. So, she's dealing with some people with some, some some real power. You know what I'm saying? So, moving on, we get a scene that Jeffrey finally made it to his daddy house. And him and Madison going upstairs. And, and, and I don't, well, I guess I'll address the small talk. He asked... Jeffrey, um, who designed the house or something, and Jeffrey asked him how he became a nurse, and he was like, I, I wasn't, I wasn't an um, uh, architect, but my dad found that I was gay and started abusing me, treating me bad, and Jeffrey was like, oh, just like my mom, and then he was just like, yeah, so that led me to be a nurse or whatever. So they go upstairs, and um, Jeffrey goes through Erica purse and pulls out her ID or passport. And I'm assuming what he seen was, she was lying about her name. And so he had a blank look on his face. Then he changed the subject and um, tells uh, Madison he had a crush on him since they were in high school. Madison was just like, oh, why you never said anything? And Jeffrey was like, nobody ever said anything. You know, it, it wasn't you know it wasn't like it is back then. It was like don't ask, don't tell, or whatever. And so then Jeffrey brung up the guy that used to bully Madison or whatever, and asked, "I wonder how he doing." This thing, they started kissing, right? And thank God Veronica walked in. Like, what the hell going on? Because <laughs> you know, like you know, Tyler and Jeffrey is just, it's just some about him. I don't know. It just he loves pumping up Jeffrey's storyline. But guys, it was a dry episode dry review but that's all i have i'll see you guys later be sure to subscribe like comment and share and i'll catch you guys next time peace